Welcome back, guys. I hope you all enjoyed learning about the birth of Christ yesterday and arming ourselves with the shield of peace. Now, I have a trivia question. Okay, Sparky. Why did Mary and Joseph have to go to Bethlehem again? Um, to have a much-needed vacation? Try again. Um, because Bethlehem had really great tacos, and since Mary was pregnant, she had a really bad craving for them and made Joseph take her all the way there? No, Sparky, because of the census, they had to be counted. Oh, oh yeah, I remember now. Yeah, it was no vacation for Mary to ride that donkey while being so pregnant, but she was faithful. And so um, I hope you all enjoyed learning about uh, the armor of God this week. Now, today we are going to armor ourselves up with the shield of faith. Dude, that sounds awesome. But I thought a shield was something that's used to protect you from flying objects like spears or swords or something, right? You are right about that, Sparky. Putting on a shield of faith means putting our faith in Jesus to protect us from unhelpful beliefs or harmful thoughts. Why do we need protection like that? Well, sometimes our words or our thoughts can cause us to doubt ourselves and even God. Our faith in Jesus can help us can help us keep those thoughts and words away. This is something that even the 12 disciples of Christ had trouble with. No way. Yeah. And we're going to hear a story about that very thing for our Bible storytellers this morning. But before we go, let's say our banner verse together from Ephesians 6.10 together one more time. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Great job, Sparky, and great job, guys. I hope you had um, a wonderful time this week um, learning as you logged in with your crafts and with your uh, with all, all those fun things that we had in your bag. And um, I hope you had fun learning about our amazing God, and we will see you soon. Good day, Knights of North Castle. Welcome back to Bible Storytelling Station, or as I like to call it, Story Hall. On yesterday's quest for the king's armor, we explored the cherished story of the birth of Jesus. Mary unlocked the secret to the shoes of peace. When we welcome peace into our hearts and share that peace with others, we know we are standing for God's way. With the belt of truth, the breastplate of justice, and the shoes of peace, our quest is almost complete. Today, we have another quest for yet more of the king's armor. Today, we're going to learn how to armor up with faith. And as before, let us prepare our hearts with our banner verse from Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 10. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Can you say that with me? Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Now, let's imagine that we're underwater as we say our banner verse. You'll understand why in a little bit. Can you take your index finger and bubble your lips while we say it? Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Huzzah! Our tale from the King's Book is from the New Testament book called Matthew, and the action begins beside a lake. The baby from yesterday's story, Jesus, has grown up and is doing miraculous things. Oh, here come his disciples now. Knights, right now we're going to share a story that has lots of ups and downs. It's a story about Jesus and his disciples and takes place right after the miraculous feeding of more than 5,000 people. I'll need you to help with this story from the other side of the camera by standing up when you hear the word up and sit down when you hear the word down. Let's practice that. I'll repeat what I just said. Stand up when you hear up. Sit down when you hear down. Great job, knights. Pat yourself on the back. Now, let's tell this story. 
After Jesus had finished the miracle of feeding the 5,000, all the people were filled up. As the crowds were settling down, Jesus made his disciples go and get into a boat to go to the other side of the lake. Then Jesus went up to the mountain and prayed. He continued even when the sun went down. Meanwhile, the disciples were having trouble. The wind had really picked up and the boat was bowing and being battered by the waves far away from the land. Very early the next morning, Jesus came down from the mountain and walked on the lake toward his disciples. When the disciples saw this, fear swelled up inside of them. It's a ghost, they said. Jesus tried to calm them down, saying, Be encouraged, it's me. Don't be afraid. Peter replied, Lord, if it's you, order me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come. So Peter got up and Peter started walking on the water toward Jesus. But Peter took his eyes off of Jesus. He saw the strong wind and he became frightened and started sinking down. He shouted, Lord, Lord, rescue me. Before Peter could flounder upside down in the water, Jesus reached out and grabbed Peter, pulling him up out of the water. Jesus said, You man of weak faith, why did you begin to have doubts? When they got in the boat, the wind settled down. Then those in the boat worshipped Jesus and said, You must be God's son. They knew that through all of life's ups and downs, the love and power of Jesus would always be with them. When the disciples saw Jesus walking on the water toward them, what did they think he was? That's right, a ghost. They were seeing it with their own eyes, yet they still had a hard time believing it. Then, who decided to join Jesus on the water? That's right, Peter. Was Peter able to walk on the water at first? Yes, he was. Then what happened? Oh, he took his eyes off of Jesus. He became frightened and he sank. Peter was doing great. Then he looked around and the waves remind, reminded him who he was. How in the world was a mere human like him walking on the water? But it wasn't remembering who he was that sunk Peter. It was forgetting who Jesus was. Peter and the other disciples had recently witnessed the miracle of Jesus feeding the 5,000 with only five loaves and two fishes. They knew he was miraculous, but in the stress of the moment, Peter forgot to have faith and he sank like a rock. Peter struggled with his faith while Jesus was right there in the flesh. We are called to have faith in Jesus, even though we can't see him with our own eyes. The Bible tells us that faith is the reality of what we hope for and the proof of what we don't see. Let us close in prayer for our final Bible session. Jesus challenged Peter and the other disciples to have faith. Faith means believing in something even when we can't see it. One thing that we know is very real, even though we can't see it, is our breath. We can't see it. For our closing today, we're going to do a simple breath prayer that focuses on a key word from each of our weekly call-outs. Let's all take in a gentle breath through the nose, then sigh out the word of truth. Are we ready? Breathe in. Truth. That was our castle call out for the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Standing true. Let's take in another gentle breath through the nose, 
this time sighing out the word justice. Are we ready? Justice. That was the castle call out for the story of David and Goliath. Now let's breathe in and sigh out the word peace. Are we ready? Breathe in. Peace. That was our castle call out for the story of Mary's journey to Bethlehem. Finally, let's breathe in and sigh out our castle call out for today, faith. Faith. This was our castle call out for the story of Jesus walking on the water. Let's breathe in and sigh out the word faith one more time. Faith. Amen.